Thank you. I'm Mr. Laner, and welcome back to Mr. Laner's Math Extravaganza. As today, in this webisode, we're going to take a look at Investigation 1.4, which is going to deal with average speed. Now, you might hear something in the background. Don't worry. That's just the rain coming down this morning as we have a nice, very ugh, gloomy day outside. But let's not focus on the weather. Let's focus on our problems up here. If you have your CMP3 book at home, that's perfect. We're gonna take a look at problems 12 and 13 from the homework. Uh, let's take a look at 12. It says, Cecilia uses time and distance data from one part of the bike to her test run to draw the following graph relating time and speed. Cecilia forgot to include scales on the axis of the graph. Hmm, must have been forgetful, like, you know, maybe some of my students sometimes. Well, let's take a look. Here's her graph. She's got time here on the x-axis, she's got speed on the y-axis, but there's no scale. Basically, there's no numbers saying there's no intervals like 5, 10, 15, 20. There's no specifics included in the graph. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a look at what this graph might show. Well, I know that it's going to show the amount of speed or how fast somebody was going over the amount of time. I also noticed that this line goes straight across. Well, hmm, that's kind of interesting. The line just goes straight across. What does that mean? Oh, you know what it means out there? Can you help me out because I'm stuck? Oh, okay. So, this, you're exactly right. The speed is going to stay the same over the amount of time. So, the speed does not change. Interesting. What might happen if the speed does not change over time? Well, let's take a look at question B. Is the graph most likely a picture of speed for a cyclist, the tour van, or wind over a part of one day's trip? and explain your reasoning about each possibility. Well, let's tackle each one. Let's think of a cyclist, bike riders out there that you like to ride your bike. Do you think your speed's gonna stay the same all the way throughout? It's always gonna be constant? Of course not, you guys already done the first three investigations. We know this. Think about riding your bike in the neighborhood. If you're going at a speed, let's say, you're going down a hill, what's gonna happen to your speed? Yeah, you're gonna increase, that's the fun part, right? Maybe put your feet off the pedals, just let yourself go down. Well. I'm going down the hill eventually. Sometimes I might have to go up the hill and it might take me very hard steps and pedals to get up. My rate's going to slow down. Think about the weather. Oh, today, perfect. It's rainy. It's very windy. I see the rain coming down. If I'm trying to pedal into this wind and rain, it's going to slow my uh, rate down. But if I'm getting the wind at my back, that might speed me up. So it wouldn't make sense for a cyclist to keep the same speed or a bicycle rider at the same speed all the way throughout. Let's think about a tour van, a car. Can a car maintain the same rate of speed? Hmm, now I know none of you can drive yet, which is a good thing, but you might be in the car with your parents. There's a nice handy little thing as they're driving maybe on the expressway. It's called cruise control. You hit this little button and whatever speed you're at, the car will maintain that speed. So if I'm at say 60 miles an hour, you know, I'm going following the laws of the, of the highway here and you're going 60 miles an hour, you can actually hit this button, take your foot off, and the car, without even put, pushing the gas pedal, will stay at that constant rate of speed. So yes, it would make sense to say that a tour van could do this. Then lastly, wind. We just talked about the wind, especially outside today. But the wind, does the wind always stay the constant rate that it is? No, maybe you played like a baseball or a sport outside, um, or you've just played at the park outside. And you'll see that the wind definitely can change. Sometimes it might hit you with a big gust. It might be really hard to go against the wind. And sometimes it might slow down. So it can definitely go both ways. And then we call that fluctuating. That would fluctuate up and down. So of these three, it would make sense to say that Cecilia's graph definitely would be for our tour van here. All right, here's your problem. Problem 13. It says that the following table shows time and distance. Data from the bike tour group's van ride home from Williamsburg to Atlantic City. And then here is your table. I'd like you to answer questions A, B, and C. I know you have your stuff ready to go at home, so go ahead and pause the video, and we'll see what you come up with. As we continue to hear the rain hit the roof. All right, let's take a look at time and distance here. Question A says, what is their average speed for the whole trip? Well, I'm gonna look. Here's time and distance in hours and in miles. So I know the first, uh, hour, they went 50 miles. Second hour, 110 miles. I also can look at the end here and see the total trip time is 8 hours and the total miles is 345. So I'm looking for their average speed of the entire trip. 
I'm going to take 345 miles divided by 8 hours to find miles per hour. Very good. And if I divide those two numbers, I'm going to get 43.125 or 43 and 125 thousandths uh, miles per hour. So basically, if I want to round it here to make it easy for myself, basically about 43 miles per hour is my average speed. B, now we got thunder going on. It's getting crazy outside. What was their average speed for the first four hours of the trip? Well, let's just look at the first four hours. So in the first four hours, we went 200 miles. So in the first four, uh, sorry, hours, I can take my distance, 200 miles, divided by four hours, and it's gonna be 50 miles per hour. So even though my average for the entire trip was 43, in this first four hours, the average was 50 miles per hour. Now some of you might be saying, well, hey, that's a little bit faster. Well, let's think about that. Why could that be faster? Well, maybe they're well rested, still the beginning, it's the morning. Maybe they had some downhills, maybe the wind was at their back, maybe it was nice sunny weather. So their rate was a little bit faster in this first four hours, uh, and it was 50 miles per hour. And then lastly, C, what was their average speed for the second four hours of the trip? So now I'm gonna look at hours five, six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna find out the total number of hours. So from 200 to 345, they travel 145 miles in that four hours. So if I take 145 miles divided by four, you'll come up with 36.25 miles per hour. So if I'm analyzing this chart now, the first four hours it was 50 miles an hour, the second four hours, the second half of the trip, it was only 36.25 miles per hour. So I know that the second half of the trip it was a little bit, their pace was a little bit slower. And yes, that makes sense because think about anything that you do when you're riding your bike, eventually you might get tired, especially if you're riding over a course of a day for eight hours, uh, you know that your rate is probably going to slow down. Again, there might be weather factors, there might be the terrain or like the hilly um, atmosphere that you're kind of going through or conditions that you're riding through. So um, it definitely does make sense to say that their average rate um, for the first out four hours is going to be faster than for the second hours based off this information in the graph. It doesn't mean it's always going to be like that because sometimes you might start off with bad weather or going up a hill and then the second half might be all downhill. So keep that in mind uh, as well. Like I always say, uh, one of my favorite things or analogies to this is cross country race. There's a cross country race at Bullfrog Lake. In the first very beginning of this race, it's a three mile race. In the first 100 to 400 meters, you run a straightaway, there's a giant downhill and it's awesome. You run down, you can run as fast as you can, then you run the rest of the two and a half miles there and then you come back after being exhausted from running. You look up and you see that giant hill and you keep thinking in your head, I do not want to run up this thing. So your rate is definitely slowing down as you're trying to run up uh, that hill, which is the same thing um, here. And then lastly, their average speed, their average um, for the entire trip was 43, again, we estimated about 43, or rounded, I should say, not estimated. We rounded to about 43 miles per hour. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Laner's Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.